Well, you know, I'm one of those tobacco farmers that came through the, the, the hard times of the, especially the 80s and 90s. And uh, if you're bound and determined that you're gonna stay on that farm and you're gonna make a living, you find out a, a way to do it. Uh, as tobacco acres decline, we found out that sweet potatoes like to grow in the same dirt that that tobacco did. Uh, so we now are number one in the nation in the production of sweet potatoes. Uh, when Burley tobacco declined in the mountains, uh, we discovered it was an excellent place to grow uh, Fraser fir Christmas trees. So now we're number two in the nation in Christmas trees. So we, we took advantage of what was a disadvantage and we moved forward and we're much stronger for that diversification. And believe it or not, tobacco is still the leading cash crop that we have in North Carolina. It, it's quiet, it's not like it used to be, but uh, tobacco is still very important, about $700 million a year. I think the, the next big thing for us is gonna be uh, growing more specialty crops here in North Carolina. We all. We already grow a lot of blueberries, a lot of strawberries, and we rank in the top five in both of those in the country. Uh, but there's demand for so many other crops. And what you find out, if you've ever been in the tobacco business with the intense management that it takes, then it's, it's a good transition to go from there to specialty crop, knowing that uh, there's gonna have to be water and irrigation involved in it, and, and a lot of labor in a lot of cases that involved in it. So, we're perfectly capable of doing that, and I see us moving into growing these specialty crops and also uh, manufacturing the, the products from these crops here in North Carolina. The labor situation can be fixed, but it takes political will to do it. Uh, I am a little bit encouraged now that uh, after a visit at the White House that the administration understands more than what they would let on about the, the labor problems that we have uh, in the United States when it comes to agriculture. Fixing the H-2A program is not a, it's not a big deal. It's, it's in fact, it's not hard to do. And we've just got to make our minds up that we're gonna do it and don't wait until it's too late until we've got all these crops rotting and we don't have uh, any labor to pick the crops or, or do the other things that we have to do. So I myself was an H-2A user uh, for a long, long time and I understand the complexities of the, pro of the program. Uh, but that's nothing but paperwork. That, you know, that's easily fixable. Uh, having a secure border uh, is fixable. Uh, but also having that door in, in that border that, uh, that lets the people in that need to come in to work both agriculturally and in other areas that we have in the country where there are labor shortages. The good thing is uh, we think at the state level that we're gonna have plenty of access uh, to the U.S. Department of Agriculture and even possibly uh, the, the Deputy Secretary or some of the Under Secretaries actually coming from the state level. So uh, we're excited about that and ready to help do anything that we can do to, to make him the best Secretary we've ever seen. I think in the Southeast right now, you know, we're, we're, we're sitting in the catbird seat and I think maybe some of my colleagues from the Midwest are not too happy about the situation, but I think those of us in the Southeast are grinning from ear to ear. I am required to be a farmer and I cannot imagine how you could go into this position or go into the secretary's position uh, and not been a farmer and experienced uh, the devastation that comes with uh, with hurricanes, with uh, tornadoes, with hailstorms, with drought, and understand that, or understand that uh, when the spring comes around, you've got to be optimistic enough to believe that this is gonna be the best year ever, no matter what. Uh, and that's one thing, if, if you can't do that, you can't be a farmer. So, uh, and that's the way you have to approach the job that uh, the Secretary Perduda has, that, that I have, that Gary Black in Georgia has. I mean, that's, that's the way you've got to approach it. It's a difficult thing to do. It's, maybe it's, it's not impossible if you're in a big enough pond, but if it's a small pond and you gotta make short turns, you better been there and done it before. We have received uh, national and international awards for this program. It's something that I'm very, very proud of, but I can go to Europe uh, or other areas of the world and walk into a grocery store, and especially with sweet potatoes, I can see, got to be in seed, North Carolina sweet potatoes. Now, that makes me proud. And I've, I've been in grocery stores, especially in England and other European markets. And when I'm 2,000 miles away from home and I can walk in there and see, got to be in seed, I'm a proud papa.